Hi everyone, uh, Alex here from Breathing Cold and I am with Dean Powell who is an expert on addiction, quantum shift, he's holding circles and in general he's a man you want to go to whenever you feel you need emotional support whether it's uh, individual or couples and his skills are really extensive and his experience is really extensive so I'm really excited to uh, get a little chat with him because of what's going on around the world you know i feel we are in a desperate situation we don't know what the future holds for us and that gets us to feel very insecure so having a little insights of what's going on and maybe some tips of what we can do is my intention for this goal my friend dean welcome brother awesome brother thank you for having me and yeah really good topic i like um i love chatting about this stuff and there's a lot of people who are freaking out at the moment um, yeah, like I think the biggest thing is we're at, there's no control. So Dean, yeah, for people who, who don't know you, and I put all the links so people can check out your work and, and, and you've written a book on addiction. Can you tell us a little bit about you and your journey, you know, like a brief introduction? Yeah, I, I um, struggled with addiction um, for a number of, number of years and I just switched addictions. So I went from like I had uh, methamphetamines to alcohol to then porn, sex, food. Um, until I sorted out what the core addiction was or the core reason that I had an addiction. And I was trying to fill a void that um, I experienced from childhood trauma. Um, so yeah, I had a, had a big journey with addiction. And my, my journey now and my focus now is life after recovery. So I recognize that I was stuck in recovery and I noticed a lot of people who are stuck in recovery. Um, and my whole focus is look, we don't have to be stuck in recovery. My whole world became about that. Um, it's about transforming that and having a life, an amazing life outside of recovery. So that's what I help people to do now. You know, I, I love that because I, I, I hear all the time, I'm healing, I'm healing. And, and you know, you never stop healing. But, you know, I, I like the idea of shifting. You are healed. Okay. Yeah. Now, okay. Yeah. Now, now I, can, I, can, I can move on. And, and it's true that we tend to be in that ongoing in, inner discussion. Says, okay, what's next? How can I peel more layers? And... And it's true, at one mm. stage you have to figure out, okay, now maybe it's time to move on. And, and that's, yeah. that's a, quite a step for, for a lot of people. Because at some stage, you know, the subconscious, if I'm continually working on myself, then my subconscious thinks I'm continually broken. Mm. And if I, if I need to continually heal, there's something that I need to be healed from. So the subconscious says, I'm not healed, I'm not okay. It's true, the, the power of the words, how we describe ourselves, how we speak about ourselves, whenever I am, and, and, and the subconscious is receiving that. That's, that's yeah. really good. It's one of the most powerful words in the universe, yeah, I am, and what comes after that is super important. So, Dean, I'm gonna throw my two cents of what I know about addiction, and I'd like for you to dig in and there and tell me, yeah, that's not it, and that's it, and then let's go into, into that. My understanding is that uh, Addiction is really not about the, the, the substance itself, but it, about the story that you're trying to, to hide or the emotion that you're trying to suppress. And instead of going and being able to explore something that is too painful to go to, you'd rather try to fix it with something coming from the outside. And it's interesting to talk about addiction, but for me, I don't see much difference between the different substances. Work, yeah. uh, uh, drugs, Money. sex, alcohol, it's kind of the same to me. And I'm, I'm interested in to say, it's just the idea of some are socially acceptable, others are, are exactly. not. But in a nutshell, it's just that I don't know how to deal with myself and I'd rather not do that. Um, yeah. Uh, how does that sound? Yes, yeah, spot on. And then everyone has that to some degree. So like my focus is like, I want to take I want to change the way we see addiction because the you know the model that we have at the moment is this shame punitive judgment model that pe pushes people further into addiction and if we understand that everyone has an addiction to something like you said some are just socially acceptable you know like people who are making a lot of money who are addicted to work you know who are successful in that sense we kind of bow down to that um, and the truth is you know it might be affecting their life in the same way that somebody who's experiencing alcohol might because a you know, like they're at work all the time, sort of the strain in the relationships, you know, like um, they're not around the kids all the time. They're using that as a mask, as a, you know, as a way to control, because they know they can control, they're really good and successful at work, but not so much socially or in other areas of their life. So, so that's a really good description. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I invite people, I, I was, um, there are two things you guys can look up. One is Elon Musk, richest man in the world now, 
and look at his interviews and when he does long interviews and he will tell you and people say, well, that must be amazing to be Elon Musk. I mean, you're, you're the top guy, you know? And he says, really guys, it sucks to be me. And he's really not happy. And, and I was really striking because we all often associate success with some kind of financial uh, success. But as you said, sometimes it's just a way of hiding something else. And the other one which everyone should watch is on YouTube and it's The Life of Paris Hilton. Yeah. And it's interesting. Have you watched it? I um, saw bits of it. I haven't seen the whole thing yet. It's fantastic because we have all those ideas about this bimbo who's completely superficial and, and he's just, just the icon of, of, of Instagram, of self invented selfies. And, and when you watch this, all this, you really understand that, you know, basically she's trying to heal. And instead of going to the root of her wounds, she's just, you know, coping with it, with being loved by every man, being, um, uh, she was saying, oh, I want to make $1 million. And then it was $100 million. And now she's going after $1 billion. And yeah. the more she makes, the less happy she becomes because she realized actually, well, that doesn't work. So man, that's even making me even more depressed because I'm not yeah. happier because I'm, once I've reached that goal, at least when you're yeah. running after the goal, you feel you've got something to look forward to. But once you reach yeah. that goal, whatever that is, man, there's nothing there. So that's yeah. where it hits. And when's yeah. enough enough? Yeah, so it's like everybody. I mean, we experience this void inside and the void generally comes from childhood trauma. Um, Gabe Mate, he says, not everyone who experiences trauma becomes an addict, but every addict has experienced trauma in their life. So it's generally a void that we're trying to fill, that we're trying to mask, that we're trying to run away from. But what we run from, we keep running into, what we run from runs us. So it kind of takes over our life, even subconsciously without us even realizing it's driving us, driving our life, driving every way we act, our voice, our communication, our emotions, yeah, our actions. I'm very interested in for us to go deep into the how, because a lot of these things that we describe, I think are familiar for some people that they are aware of this, but I think what is, and we're going to go there, what's difficult is, okay, now I know that, so what? How do I actually do all these things. So that's what's interesting. Just before we go there, I just want to um, uh, share one thing that I love Gabor Maté. I really invite everyone to study his work, especially on, on addiction. Mm. But there's one thing that we all share is as a kid, you rely on your parents for your survival. If, the, if mother doesn't give you uh, food, you're going to die. So you realize very early that you have to please your parents. And mm. He, in order to please your parents, you're going to compromise on your identity. He says, if I'm myself, mommy's not going to love me. And if mommy says, oh, you, what a good boy. This is great. This, you behave the way, if I behave the way mommy and daddy are expecting me to behave, then I'm going to be fed. I'm going to survive. The problem is we carry that in our life. We are not being ourselves because we want to be accepted by our partners, in our jobs, yeah. in our society, in our tribes. So we are constantly trying to figure out who am I when I'm not that person pleaser who's just trying to be loved yeah. by mommy whatever representation that gets and yeah, yeah. We all have that so it's a shared trauma yeah. that's something that yeah. we all share so regardless because often people associate trauma with you know a rape or uh, oh, someone who's or beaten up or something that is you know heavy and then people feel yeah. well i didn't have any trauma so why am i not okay because i don't have anything that you know all these people had is terrible stories and, and they don't feel entitled to not be okay. And, and yeah. I just, you know, a trauma is the inability to respond to a situation. You stay in freeze. You're not able to do anything about the situation. Either your child being beaten up by, by your parents and, you know, it's your dad, what are you going to do? But it can also be a kid who tried to express himself to his parents and don't have the space. So you are in freeze. You are, okay, yeah. I cannot be myself. That's a trauma. And, and it can that's be as some... simple as that, yeah. Like I actually, I had a session with a, with a client two days ago, and it's also how we, you know, what we make out of whatever happens, our surroundings, our stimuli. And this guy, like he remembers as a kid, he came down the stairs. He was like five years of age, walked into the kitchen. His dad said to him, "You can't go out looking like that." Yeah, and just that one thing that happened, then he thought, "Oh my God, you know, like I, I can't, 
have my hair the way I want my hair. I can't wear the clothes that I want to hear. So that thing set up a whole thing in his life where he realized he became this, nothing was ever good enough. He kept raising the standard and he kept trying to please his dad. But his story was, my dad's never proud of me. My dad doesn't love me. My dad doesn't accept me. I'm not seen. And when we went through and explored all of that, we realized, well, he got to see that. He actually made that up because he just said, you know, fuck you, dad. I'm going to wear what I want. He there, he went out anyway. So and I said, Well, did your dad stop loving you? He was like, Me, still, you know, like, still together. He'd made the story that dad doesn't love me, that dad doesn't see him, you know. And then that one thing set up his whole life where he got to a point where he's even doing a job now that he hates, but he's doing it because he knows that's what he thinks his dad would want him to do to be successful because he's earning good money, but he's miserable. Yeah. And you know what? It's interesting the example you take. Um, because I, I, I can completely relate to that story. And often it's not about your parents wanting to be proud of you. And we think, oh, I want my dad to be proud of me. It's actually, we want to be loved. Yeah. And it's, it's just, it's not so much I want to be seen, but it's really, I want to be loved. That's prime need of a child that wants to be loved by his dad and by his mom. And, and the yeah. dad is loving in his way with his own language and it's not that yeah. he's not but it's not your language it's not the way you see it so there is yeah. a kind of a, a, a you miss it you, we miss each other there. yeah but it's even deeper than that though like it's even not just to be loved but i want to be important enough to be loved like i want to matter enough to be loved and so quite often people don't feel like they matter or they're seen or they're accepted enough to even be loved by them so that kind of it's deeper than just being loved yeah of course wow so mm. walk us through Okay, so now we've established the ground of care. This is where we're going. Um, this is what we are dealing with and we all have that to deal with. So walk us on the how. How do we get out of the story? Well, I think it's understanding that that story then drives how we run our life. And we've spoken a lot about this. Um, even the other day, we were talking about triggers, you know, like and how we all have our own triggers. So because of these stories, that they determine the triggers that we have in our life. And, you know, some, somebody will say something you know, it might be a sound, a smell, the sound of somebody's voice. It might be a smell of an aftershave. Um, it might be a certain situation that reminds us of what happened, you know, when we were young that triggers us in some way. Um, and understanding, first of all, that uh, our triggers, you know, and that the triggers are a good sign. Like you said this to me the other day, my God, that's amazing. I was telling you about this trigger that I had. And you were like, that's awesome, you know, like, and, and you're right, because it's, uh, it's information for me to realize that there's something I can release because we all get around with these triggers that we have. And then we don't want people to push these triggers, but the best way to not have people push our triggers is to not have those triggers, yeah? Essentially, we will bump into, into somebody who's going to set off these triggers. And it's generally in relationships, especially, is where we get triggered the most. So I love that. It's first of all, understanding that we have triggers and that they're our triggers. Yeah. And, and, and just to, and I want to continue on that, but just to, for everyone, you know, I teach breathwork and ice bathing. And when I take an ice bath, uh, before getting to a nice bath, I'm afraid of it. I don't want to do it. I want to get away from it. And I shift to, I know how amazing it's going to feel once I'm going to do it. It's, I hate it for 10 seconds, and then I know it's going to be blissful. So I'm able to process and to basically shift from fear to love. Yeah. And I train myself to do that. And it's exactly what you need to do whenever you're triggered. To read, instead of pushing away the situation says, no, I want to stay, I'm comfortable with my story and comfortable, leave me alone. I don't want to have this discussion. I can't be with you, whether it's your partner, someone triggering you at work. If you able in that moment to shift from fear to love and says, oh, amazing, I'm being triggered. I want to run away. I know what to do because I train if you do these practices. Now I'm going to stay and I'm going to be sitting down and I'm going to meditate on it and I'm going to feel, I'm going to journal, I'm going to find a way to process it. I'm going to express myself if I can with, you know, if you are, have that level of communication. And then usually you get incredible insights about yourself. And that's the only thing that matters. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And this is, it's the self-exploratory journey. And, and there's also like, I love that, you know, leaning into that. When we lean into that is where we get the information. When you go within, you'll never go without. Yeah. So we start mm -hmm. to see what's really going on and that's empowering. Um, and then also like you were just saying about, you know, um, the easy thing is to run and to not want to go into those triggers. And, and you know, like the, the immediate thing is to resist or repel and run away from it. But, you know, like I think the more we lean in, and even like the ice bath, you know, oh my God, I don't want to do this. It's similar to addiction, you know, 
like it's easy to have that hit. It's easy just to quench that thirst or quench, you know, like the craving. But it's having the the you know mindset like, hey, what's this going to do for me? So forward thinking, what's this going to do? How am I going to feel after this? If I say no to this, how am I going to feel? The more I say no, the better I feel. So it's like that. It's building that muscle of resistance, that discipline muscle to say no. The more I do that in my life, like I mean, I can have it. It's easy. Like I'm an adult, I can choose whatever I want to have. And I, I set myself up in my life where I had no boundaries, which is why I became an addict because it's just easy to do what I want. And then I realized I've got to parent myself a lot better than that. You know, I've got to parent my inner child um, lovingly, but say no, like, no, it's not okay to have that. It's not okay to have that. I mean, every once in a while, you're moderation, but it's about the more I say no to the things that I know aren't healthy for me, the easier my life gets. You know, I, I love that. I mean, the science is clear. Whatever you, you try to resist, you actually reinforce, yeah. you know, you make it grow. Yeah. And if it doesn't, grow in anger you know you can express it it grows within and then you're gonna get a cancer you're gonna get diabetes you're gonna t trigger uh, the start of an autoimmune uh, 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 disease yeah. so it's Old really depression. that idea you need to you can't force things out in life you need to let it go it's that idea of surrendering and and and, and going in ease you now these ease that's really, yeah. I mean, can I be in ease rather than in being these ease? And it's really one of those, those two. So let's dive right into, okay, so how does, how does one come to do all that with you, Dean, in your sessions? So the, um, one of the most powerful things, I mean, I do coaching and uh, I coach people through addictions. And um, one of the best things I do is called quantum shift. And the quantum shift basically goes back and it shows us that, the, you know, everybody has a core story that we run about ourselves. I'm not worthy, I'm not lovable, I'm not successful, I'm not brainy, I'm not whatever it is, yeah? Um, information that we got when we were young. So we have a core story and then we have all of these little sub-stories that run off that core story. Um, and so what we, what we do is we go back and we collapse that, that core story um, by showing that it was actually developed by us. It was developed on a lie. It was built on a lie, on our information that we take in because of the way we think. And I show the whole science and quantum physics behind it. But when you get rid of that core story, it opens up the possibility, oh my God, you know, like, so I'm the one in charge here. I'm the one who can change this. I'm the one who can recreate whatever it is that I want. So it's us, you know, thinking that I can't have the life of my dreams. I can't have the life that I want. These people who can, they're just lucky, they're successful. Um, but it's we're in our own way. Like I didn't realize like the money stories I had and you know, money and sex and relationships are closely linked. So because I couldn't have money in my life, I didn't have really good relationships. I didn't have amazing sex. And, you know, like, because I, I didn't believe that I was valuable or I was worthy of it. Um, and we all have, you know, we have a level of self, self-worth that we vibrate at. Most of us try to increase our net worth in our life all the time. So we try to get more money, more love, more acceptance, more friends. And our subconscious will dump that back to our level of self-worth because that's where we vibrate at. So even lotto winners, they say, I think it's 97% or 93% of lotto winners when they lose their earnings within three years because they've suddenly, you know, they're vibrating down here and they've suddenly got this massive net worth and the subconscious thing, because you have to, by all the laws of physics, science and nature, it has to vibrate where your self-worth is. So what I help with my clients is when we get rid of this trauma and these stories that they've been running, we increase their level of self-worth. And then again, by all the laws of physics, science and nature, their net worth has to automatically increase as we increase their self worth. Yeah. So it's basically the more trauma we get rid of, the better we feel about ourselves, the more self esteem we have, the more self worth we see what we bring to the table. We vibrate more at that, at that attraction level in life, you know? I love it. I mean, I've done sessions with you, so I've experienced the, the work. I highly recommend to anyone to, to do that because it's the idea of getting out of the victim mode. Now I can, be, I can be the driver of my life. And it's easy to stay the victim and poor me with everything that happened. Of course, I'm like that. So basically, my environment defines my personality. Of course, I'm like that. But what if it's the opposite? What if you create and you define your personality and that creates your personal reality? You know, yeah. I love Richard Bronson when I was a kid. You know, this guy, he has... I love that he was walking around. He doesn't own a computer. He's got these hot girls that are his assistant and he's, you know, on his island and he's having just fun and he doesn't care about it. I love this. Model. And, and I uh, read an interview when people were asking, oh, come on, it's easy. You, you, it's easy to be happy. You've got money. You've got the girls. Of course you're happy. Yeah. And you know what he said? 
He said, no, no, you got it back to front. It's the opposite. It's because I'm happy that I have the success. Exactly. And that's the secret, yeah. you know. Once yeah. you're happy, then everything comes. But it's not once you get it all that you're happy. Yeah, yeah. You need to yeah. reverse engineer life, you know. Yeah. It's a one so one good book is rich rich dad poor dad. I don't know if you've re yeah, read that, that. Robert, Robert but it's Kiyosaki. really what you said. You know, why do poor people make poor kids, and rich people make rich kids regardless of their inheritance? It's because when yeah. you're poor and your parents are raising you, they say, "Oh, be careful, mommy worked hard for that." You know, money doesn't fall from the tree. You know, just be mindful of everything. So you're you're growing up thinking, "Wow, money's hard. I have to work hard." Da 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 da. But if money's everywhere, oh, I break my car, daddy gave me another one, you know? So it's yeah. really just the story that is the difference. And you can, yeah. once you're aware of it, you just, it's actually simple, but not easy. But it's really yeah. that idea of letting go of the story and defining what story do I want to upload up there? Yeah, creating our own reality. So this is our hologram. If I'm creating this hologram, it can be any way that I want. I mean, in the same deal, how many people have said to you, Oh, you're so, you know, you're so lucky. Like you live in a paradise island, you know, like you're so lucky. <laughs> and luck had nothing to do with it, yeah? Like you had to work hard and let go of a lot of stuff to get here and change your thinking and change your lifestyle and change, you know, there's a, a letting go of people's opinions and, you know, how dare you, you know, get up and leave and how dare you, how dare you, how dare you, yeah? So it takes courage, it takes commitment, it takes, you know, like it takes the opportunity that we're well, taking opportunities to make that happen. But also it tells something about people who are not focused on themselves, but I just, I'd rather focus on judging others, you know? And then yeah. I don't take it personal, you know? I know that it's people's projection of their own stories that they are, so it's easier to, you know, yeah. justify your own story where you're at by criticizing others, whatever that means. Yeah. You know, it's, my, it's not my scared, fault, yeah. it's the Republicans and or, you know, yeah. whatever it is, it, it works in all the stories. But once you start, yeah taking responsibility for your actions and then it, it, you become empowered with your, with your own, own life. Absolutely. And then, it's, then you're stepping away from that victim mode and starting to take this, no matter what's happened. I mean, because there's some, I mean, because of the work that I do, I get to hear some incredible stories and what you perceive to be like horror stories. Um, and like, my God, people are amazing. You know, like, I mean, the, the things people get to live with and endure in their life and then to make something out of themselves because of that, you know, is incredible. I love that. And I love that I, I, what I, I did the sessions with you is really realizing you are who you are thanks to that, what happened to you, you know? Yeah, exactly because of that, yeah. And, 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 and instead of being sorry for yourself you revisit the things you're proud of in your life and that makes you who you are today and the things of resilience and the empowerment and the fact that but you you can see that with all the people that you know and every this is a bit of a judgment but people that are famous for doing these amazing things in the world the root is usually some kind of trauma or wound that they manage to get the power from you know you hear all these heroes often, journey yeah. you know you know joseph yeah, campbell yeah is that you need to go into, oh my God, I was depressed and I broke my back and, 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 and then I, I came out. So it's really your ability to navigate, and we all have that at a certain level, navigate yeah. what's going on and be able to, to shift it into something positive and get out of that story. And the best way to do that is utilizing that story, utilizing, because everybody's got a book inside of them. Every, everybody's got a story. And we don't understand that that's, the, which is why I wrote my book, Shoot Up. To, and, I, and the intention of writing it, because I'm not a writer, and even as I'm writing, I'm like, oh, you know, I don't know if anyone's going to hear my story or want to read it. Um, I'm not a writer. But then my intention was, look, if I can help one person to not go through what I went through, like just with my story, then, then this book is totally worth it. And now it's helped like hundreds of people, ah, which is amazing, yeah. you know. So everybody has that inside of them. And it might be like, I mean, I've worked with mums and, you know, like, um, who are like, oh yeah, I don't really have anything to bring to the table. I'm like, what? You're a mum, you know? Like, it just you write a book on being a mum, or your experience of being a mum, or the trauma that you experienced in your life, you know, the love that you didn't get from your parents that you're giving to your kids, anything. Like, I mean, there's always an aspect, and we all have a little niche there that's completely different to everyone else's experience, you know? So it's realizing the value in that, that every human being has value. Every human being, you know, all of our existence, our experience has value for another person on the planet somewhere. And I think that's where I really started to realize 
You know, when I worked at the rehab center, you know, I, I first, first time in my life I understood that what I'd gone through was actually valuable because these guys could really relate. And the fact that I went so low as a junkie, as an addict, you know, like, you know, I went to these depths of, you know, like, um, you know, really low, what we'd call low in society's rungs of the ladder, I guess. But um, they could really relate to me. And then I was like, wow, you know, like my experience is really, really valuable. And so then doing the book and then creating an online addiction program, you know, like the idea behind that was, oh my God, I get to help people with this now. And I never would have been able to do this without my story as a junkie. And I could have just kept doing that. And I've met people who are still, you know, who, who I used to hang around with. I ran into somebody last time I was back in Australia who's still doing that, you know. And his story is, yeah, the world's fucked up. I had a rough upbringing, you know, like, and, and he's just stuck in that in that mode and that victim mode. Um, which I get as well, you know, like, and I understand it's, it's a scary thing to have to change. I mean, but, yeah. Definitely no judgment, but at the end of the day, there is only one life, might as well enjoy yeah. it. And, yeah. and that's really what it comes down to, you know, it's like, okay, you know, some people believe in afterlife, but you're not sure about it. So let's enjoy this life you know, yeah, yeah. And, and get yeah. the most of that, of, of that moment. You know, I've done, the, I've done the sessions with you and it's really that idea of you're a sounding board. You know, you're just there, you're really a mirror and just getting us to resonate, to, to repeat a few times certain sentences, to just build up the confidence again and, and really rephrase and, and re, reprogram ourselves through that. So it's... Um, yeah. And the premises, look, I mean, it's, it's based on, look, essentially the universe doesn't make mistakes. So our perception is... Universe is over here performing this miracle while that abuse is going on. You know what I mean? So it's stopping and going, well, come on. If everything is omnipresent, omnipotent, everything happens for a reason. Find the reason, love in it, and it changes the whole story. Completely mm -hmm. shifts the whole reality. Universe doesn't fuck up. It doesn't make mistakes. You are exactly who you are meant to be. You are exactly who you are because of what you went through, because of everything that happened to you. Everything is perfectly designed, orchestrated. I mean, God, grand organizing designer, yeah? Brand because it's brand continually organizing. It's an amazing design. I love that. You know, people. I, I, in March, I did a video: Is coronavirus a good thing or a bad thing? And you know, the answer is: I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. But if I have to make a choice, I might as well decide that it's a good thing. So now, all of a sudden, you are welcoming anything that is happening as a blessing. And really, yeah. it's hard to really get your head around sometimes when you have really, really tough, how could that be a good thing that I lost my job, that my girlfriend leaves me, you know, it's, it's not always obvious, you know, yeah. I have cancer and tell me it's a good thing, you know, it's, it's pretty heavy. But sometimes you hear it over and over, people tell you, well, that's actually the best thing that happened to me. Yeah. Because I had to make the right changes in my life that were meant to happen, yeah. you know. People say it's terrible because we are stuck at home with our kids and our partners. Well, maybe it's temporary terrible, but it means there was something wrong that needed to be dealt with in some form or another. Highlighted that, yeah. It's highlighted, but it's not because yeah. of COVID. You know, the yeah. problems were there. It's just being highlighted and, and brought to surface with, with this situation, lockdown, whatever is going on. And then you have, to, you have to deal with it. You cannot escape anymore. So in real in disguise, this COVID is a blessing because yeah. we actually need to face ourselves. We need to shut up, sit down, wear a mask, listen more, uh, stay at home. And all these things that we hate doing because it's much easier to bury ourselves in work, in activities and doing, doing, doing. You know, I always say, you know, the hardest thing is to do nothing. And if you think you can do nothing, you can always do less. You know, that's from my friend Mark Cohen. Yes. And, and always, yeah, yeah. And, and that's where proper shifts happen. So um, I, worked with, I got a testimonial from a client yesterday who had um, aggressive cancer um, and we'd done some work and she just like wrote a testimonial saying, thank you so much for the work you've done for me. Like, you know, she, she literally said cancer was the best thing that ever happened to her. It saved her marriage. It saved her health. It saved her relationship with her kids. Like if this cancer had come in, she said she would just carry on living her life the way she was living, not happy, miserable marriage, whining, moaning all the time. Whereas, you know, like we did, because I said to her in the beginning, if you fight this cancer, it's going to fight you back. Because mm -hmm. the first thing we do is try to fight it. Declare a war. Whatever we declare a war and declare a war on drugs, declare a war on terrorism, declare a war on cancer. You know, like it gets 
worse, yeah, because we're declaring a war and it wants to fight you and fight back. I said, you have to find out why it came into your life, thank it and love it. And we did this where she was in tears. Um, and this is the this is the thing we need to come to is like, why did this come in? Like, I mean, I know there's people struggling and, and, and you know, like I, I feel for the people who are struggling, losing houses, losing businesses, losing lives, you know, losing loved ones. But the amazing thing that's coming out of what's going on at the moment is you're right, people are realizing they've been in unhappy marriages and relationships you know, for years and years and years, and they don't want it to be this way. They're in jobs that they're not happy in. They're doing work that they don't like. They're physically unhappy with themselves. And it's like the universe is going, you're not getting another chance. You've got, like you said before, you've got one go at this, one life. Do something about it now. And it's forcing us to have to do something. Also to get together as a humani as hum humanity, community, to start looking after our, our neighbours and our, uh, the people around us and start connecting more with people, to start realising what our governments and, you know, the powers that be are capable of as well. So starting to wake up, yeah? So it's amazing yeah. that it's happening. I fully agree. And also, we don't need to have a cancer. We don't need to wait for the no. shit to happen. You know, it's not, exactly. you, you, you can come to, to that space without all that. Just becoming yeah. more uh, caring, accepting, surrendering, loving, you know, evaluating that vibration. And all of a sudden things are, are easier around, around you and things start starts coming uh, naturally. So it's, it, it, we don't need to go to having these you know, near-death experiences and, and there are amazing yeah. studies on that. We don't need that. You don't need that. You yeah. can just come to the realization. And that's why I love breath work or meditation or ice baths because it's kind of a, a near-death experience every time you hold your breath too long, every mm. time you are staying in the ice and getting close to hypothermia. You're having this training of getting close to your edges. And, and, and also it's highlighting traumas that are hidden, yeah? So like as it's releasing things that we don't know that are suppressed and you don't necessarily, like I've done breath work with you a, a number of times and stuff's come up that I had no idea was there. And I didn't yeah. need to know because it was just being released and the, the release is amazing. So it's like, it's, it's almost like it's a preventative, yeah? It's not the, you're not waiting for something to happen. It's like this preventative, pre preventative care that's actually releasing stuff before it becomes a problem. Exactly, exactly. Ah, so Dina, tell us, how can we, um, oh, first of all, is there something else you would like to share this morning? There was something in you that you'd like to share? Mm. No, nothing. Oh. I think, um, well, actually, just, I mean, talking about, I spoke to you about, like, I run men's circles, you know, so like, I mean, men's work is very, very important um, for me in my life. And the reason I do it is because I need it. You know, I, I had this perception of men where I was scared of men my whole life. You know, men were going to hurt me. They were going to steal my, my girl. They were going to, you know, take my money or, you know, like, like I said, they're going to hurt me. So that perception, I just, I just had no men in my life or no men that I could trust. Um, so I used to hang around girls and women all the time and softer female energy. And then I became very, very feminine, you know. Um, and then I didn't realize, you know, that I needed men in my life. And so these men's circles are a really good opportunity for guys just to, to open up and talk about what's really going on. And because guys, we don't normally talk to people. We don't, first of all, don't admit that we need help. And, and if we do, we only usually admit it to our partners. And so then our partners know that we're struggling. So it puts them under pressure because they know we're not going to get help. They know we're struggling and we're just relying on them. Um, but we put them under the tone of silence. You can't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone what I just told you. So they're like, oh my God, so much added pressure. So the men's circle and men's work that I do is just a place where men get to actually talk and release and not have to bring everything, you know, to their partners um, and have an expression. Yeah. And you've been a few times. It's just a, it's a very down to earth, um, real space. Yeah. I mean, it's fantastic. I think, and for me, it's really, a human circles, men, men circles, yeah. mixed circles. It's that idea of, you know, there are plenty of studies now on blue zones. What is the key to longevity? How, you know, study, check it out. Or multi-gold medalist. What makes a multi-gold medalist? It's connection. What makes someone yeah. live longer? It's not food. It's not diet. It's not exercise. It's connection. So cultivating... That's the opposite of addiction. The opposite cultivating of addiction deep connection in your life. Is, is the way and, and, and we're not taught to do that. We're taught it's my problem, I have to deal with it. Yeah. And finding a space to, where you feel safe to share what's going on, whatever that is, um, is important. I, I remember in some circles where you know, one man was sharing 
that he was going through cancer and how he was dealing with it. And then after that, someone uh, uh, probably 50 years younger shared how he was struggling with premature ejaculation. Yeah. And what was incredible is the, the level of, of, you know, it's the same. It's just a man expressing yeah. what's going on. And there is no, oh, hey, one guy is dying, the other guy has something that's going to be resolved. But no, it's, it's okay. This is what's going on for you. That's what it's alive in you. And there is no hierarchy yeah. there. And, and we're just vessels just to hold a space and to let you express what's there and feel, oh, wow. Usually there are others that will, re- 99% will resonate and say, yeah, you're telling my story yeah. or you're yeah, telling yeah. about your cancer. I'm thinking about my dad right now. So, you know, yeah. the resonance can be at different level, but it's that idea yeah. of you don't have to do it alone. You don't have yeah, to do it by yeah. yourself. Uh, and there's so, a magic in saying it, even just hearing ourselves say the words, but especially to a group of guys, there's a magic that happens. And guys talk about this all the time. You guys come and they go, oh my God, just saying that was like so healing for me. But then also to hear the other guys give resonance and feedback on what they heard and how it resonated with them. was like, oh my God, I'm not alone. I'm, you know, everyone, other people get me. Like I thought I was the only one going through this. There's a magic that happens there as well. Yeah. And you, you, you what's interesting is, Whenever you do that, the magic happens for both people, the person who will express yeah. and the person who will receive. And sometimes you will have people that will not say anything and they'll say, oh my God, I got so much just to you know, connect to something real, authentic. And that's some space that we are craving for these days more than ever. Yeah. So well done on this work, Dean. Yeah, and thank I, you, brother. And, you know, I love it. I love doing it. And like I said, I do it because I need it. Um, and just to let everyone know, we have an online, like we have a worldwide one online every Friday, 5 to 7 p.m. Bali time. Um, anybody listening, it's for men only, obviously, but you can join the Manhood All Good Facebook group and you'll get the, the Zoom link details there. Yeah, we, we will put all one, the links one. in the notes. Yeah. Uh, so we'll uh, send me after that on WhatsApp all the links and we'll update that for, for everyone to have access to. Beautiful. So l- tell us what is your offering at the moment? You've got the circles, you have one-on-ones. Yeah, I do one-on-one sessions. I have um, online and coaching. offline. I do online and offline. Yeah, so in person and, and um, via uh, via Skype, which I yeah. do all over the world, which just as well. I have um, I have on an online a sixteen-week online addiction program for people who are struggling with addiction, and then I have a twelve-week online program for people who are looking after people with addiction. Because generally, what you know, parents and siblings and partners, what they do tends to push the person further into the addiction without them realizing they end up enabling them. So this. On, online course shows them how not to do that amazing so we put all the links to <coughs> excuse me links the links to that i'm um yeah. is that is, is that it i think that's a lot already um that's a lot yeah that's a lot already and um, yeah, just the coaching that i do as well but um yeah like i run cacao ceremonies and yeah like i said the men's circles and stuff that i love but yeah cool. it's really cool, cool. Um, and you what have you got coming up uh so thanks so for asking well i'll be with you and actually I'm offering from 1st of February, uh, three weeks offline and six weeks online. So it's online and offline at the same time. Uh, Breathwork teacher training. And I bring probably 25 most amazing humans I know. Some are extremely famous. And they all bring their light on the breath and the magic of the breath. The intention is for people to find their breath. Not to follow one guidance, one guru, one style, one approach, one breath, but just to figure out who they are by exploring their own breath and what resonates with them. So we've got, you know, champions, uh, world champions of free diving, osteopaths, opera singers, uh, people working with Olympic athletes. You're helping with, you know, all the things we've, we've, we've explored. Jason Diggs on, you know, authentic relating. So the guy who is behind the whole art, uh, art of authentic relating, he'll be sharing that. We also have Patrick McKeon, who's the author of Oxygen Advantage, you know, the, the, the oh, wow. Uteco guy. Oop. Wow. Oops. And, and we have all these incredible humans uh, coming. So I'm very, I'm very excited for, for that. So if anyone is interested, reach out to me. It's called Breathing Called Bali. Uh, everything is on the website. We are almost full, so it's not for uh, not for uh, hurry up if you're interested. We are closing. Uh, I think by the end of the week we should be we should be closed. And um, yeah, we are building tribes. It's it's. I'm very very proud of of it. It's really something that uh, that I feel is different because it's not one guy's teaching everyone. Most of the time when you have yeah. a teacher training, is one guy who knows better. 
and everyone is yeah. learning from that guy. But my intention is that the person joining is the hero and we're just here yeah. to support that, your development. So it's a really humble approach to that. teaching, which I think that's the kind of teaching, I, you know, I wish I had, I had done in a, in a way. Yeah. So that's why I'm putting it. It's more it unique, together. yeah? Yeah. It's actually more personalized, more unique. And, and it's that, yeah, like everybody learns differently and has, has a different experience. So I love being able to, I mean, for me, that's a good teacher, you know, like a, a good guru, somebody who finds the strengths in me and brings those, or helps me to develop those strengths so that I experience life my way, um, but in yeah. a better my way. Yeah. yeah, yeah, of course. So that's really, that's, that's really it. So yeah, if anyone interested, reach out guys. And um, the intention for this uh, particular one is to have fun. So we have fun in 2021 because I feel the world and my world, I needed fun. So I'm setting that as a clear intention. And I'm doing okay so far. I'm having a lot of fun so far. So all good. Why not? Yeah, we're here to play. Yeah, it's no ego, we go. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you, Dean. Thank you so much for your time. Everyone, have a beautiful weekend. See you around. Share, like, Thank comment. You, Tell See us what you, you think. Bye-bye. Yeah, any questions, guys, reach out.